Well, hello and good morning. We're uh, starting off today uh, with a very first interview with MGA, the Malta Gaming Authority. And to tell us a little bit more about what you guys are doing here today is uh, Josef Kuskiri. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so, um, Joseph, what are, what are you actually guys doing here? Can you tell us a little bit about what your establishment is doing? Yes, Malta has been now in the remote gaming industry for the last 12 years. Um, we have one of the largest portfolio of companies in the world. We have approximately 265 companies now licensed in Malta. So, of course, our presence here is to, to meet prospective licensees, so um, online gaming operators who would like to consider Malta, Malta as their licensing jurisdiction, but also to meet the, the rest of the stakeholders you know, here, and we'll tell them about Malta, what our future plans are, you know, and, and what the future of the gaming industry looks like in Malta. So, and we've been quite busy, I must say. So can you give us a bit of an insight into what the future does hold for you? Oh, well, Malta's future looks bright in the sense that um, we have, I mean, our, our jurisdiction offers various incentives, um, mainly related to the ICT infrastructure, the knowledge base, the, the, uh, the regulatory framework, which is now tried and tested. So essentially in Malta we have a very sophisticated, I would say, ecosystem which supports the industry from each and every angle, both from the technical side, from the regulator side, and from the commercial side. So Malta offers, I would say, a competitive package, uh, which has integrity, which is very transparent, and which offers also the, the, right, the right quality measures for the industry. And um, I believe that, the, that you're getting an award later today? Yes, yes. <laughs> Tell us about what that, what's that for? Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. you know, in fact, I'm very delighted about it. Um, it's an award for... Um, a distinguished kind of distinguished achievements so it's my 15th month now in the road so I'm relatively new to the gaming industry so of, of course I was very happy that I, I was awarded this and, and to be part of the Hot 50 this year and that gives me the motivation to work harder you know for the future of the gaming industry in Malta. So why do you think you were awarded that in particular? What makes you different to everybody else? Why do we need to aspire to be like you? <laughs> well, maybe I think I came from outside the industry, so my background is more telecoms, but now I joined the gaming industry as a regulator. And I think I came in with uh, lots, of, lots of energy, d dynamism, and also uh, came in with, with lots of, I would say, motivation to make a difference. So I think that has been felt both within the organization and also between the licensees and, and the positive feedback we're getting from them. So <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations. Now, um, you've also brought um, a guest along with you. Yes. Um, I believe the Parliamentary Minister, Jose yes. Herrera, if I could uh, get you to uh, come and join us. Um, welcome to ICE Totally Gaming. Um, tell us why it's important for you to be here. Yes, um, we're over, obviously over here to try and sell our jurisdiction, multi jurisdiction, promote our jurisdiction. Uh, first of all, just a background, um, the gaming industry, Malta, is one of our foremost industries. Um, the gaming industry um, is land-based, but is also um, based uh, electronically. Um, why we're here to try and show people why it's good for them to try and operate through via Malta. So we have a, a regulatory authority. We have almost 300 foreign companies registered with our jurisdiction, and we have one of the best regulators around. We are transparent, we are effective, but we're also customer friendly. That's the important thing, that our regulator is very customer friendly. Secondly, it's very important to operate through Malta, or it is worthwhile operating through Malta, because of logistics sake. Sometimes if you're a small country, it pays you. To trans translocate, for example, your employees in a small country is easier. The running costs are far easier. Um, the rental uh, value of properties is lower than the average in Europe. The weather is, is, is friendly. Uh, it's pleasant living there. And there's like a community of, of, of uh, people working in the industry. To give you an idea, it is probably our second largest industry, the gaming industry. What are we doing for the future? We are going to create um, another separate entity, which is going to be called Gaming Mall Town. This is going to be the promotional arm of the industry because we felt that perhaps to leave the promotional aspect of the industry in the hands of the regulator could uh, appear to conflict so we decided to create 
this new entity which will be launched soon. Besides that, we've, we've also launched a few months ago um, another foundation which is called the Responsible Gaming Foundation. So in an instance we are promoting the industry but on a parallel level we are also promoting it uh, in a responsible fashion. So we have to try and keep a balance and uh, which is which is a which is a very good thing and then we're also going to create uh, an academy a gaming academy which is hopefully there to attract international interest not just for the Maltese uh, people but also for other people who want to uh, get involved in this industry because it's becoming quite technical and we're going to offer courses from holistically they will uh, learn the different aspects of, of the industry so we're promoting these ideas Apart from that, to give you an idea, the industry, I don't know if the, chair, the chairman explained, has grown over the last year by more than 16-17 percent, which is, which is uh, quite good, As, especially in the remote gaming sphere. In the remote gaming sphere, we're growing. When it comes to the land-based, we are still, um, uh, we're, not, we're not yet completely liberalized in the sense that you cannot just come and open a casino in Malta. You have to ask the government to grant you a concession. This is being reviewed also. We're reviewing whether we should also liberalize the, the land-based gaming. So there is a lot of uh, work going on in, in this regard, in Malta. Good. Thank you. Well, I think that is definitely quite a, a long list of benefits there of uh, working in the gaming industry in Malta. So thank you very much, Jose Herrera, for taking us through that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you later.